Hey y'all, so I've had my braids in for almost three weeks. Can y'all believe that it's been that long already? But yes, it's been almost three weeks and it is time to touch up my edges. Now usually when I'm wearing box braids, I do an edge retouch about every three weeks. Sometimes a little longer, but I feel like three weeks is the max, especially when my hair is short because my hair starts looking a little rugged around the edges, especially since I'm graying now, like all them grays are peeping through. And also since my hair is shorter in the back, those braids are loose and I don't want to be walking down the street and one of them braids fall out. And the most important reason why I make sure to touch up my edges is because as the braids grow out and they get heavy, they kind of hang on your edges and that will cause breakage between the weight of the braids especially when you have the long braids like I do these braids come all the way down to my bootay when you have the long braids like I do and then with the dirt like getting caught up in the edges it's the quickest way to have your edges breaking off and you know when I take these braids out I want to have my edges intact it was supposed to be a protective style I don't want to be bold when I take these braids out but anyway it's time to retouch my edges and I'm going to show you guys how I do it so stay tuned so I'm going to start with this first edge braid and as you can see it's starting to hang pretty bad. So I'm going to be using my baby tress edge brush and I'm going to use the pointy tip of the brush just to get started taking the braid loose and I'm going to be using the same here. I'm not going to cut the braids out and use new hair because I haven't had my braids in that long and I'm just going to take my time and unravel the braid and if I feel like it's a little too tight I can use the tip of that edge brush to help me but once I get further to the top of the braid it becomes easier to just take it out by hand and I kind of do this like pulling motion and then just separate. So we're finally getting to the root and I'm just gonna be a little gentle while I unwrap the braid from my hair. And surprisingly, the hair is pretty clean, but as you can see, like, there's a little bit of buildup on my edges. So I'm just going to take the comb part of my baby truss edge tamer brush and just comb that out. And then I'm going to take the brush part and just go through it again. And I'm going to be using this Shea Moisture Coconut and Hibiscus Plus Black Seed Edge Gel to touch up my braids. And I'm just going to take a little bit of that and put it around my edges and that's how I grip everything and on my hair because that's how I get the hair to stay neatly inside the braid and I'm just going to put that braid back in like I did originally and I'm going to get my edges nice and tight but not too tight where it's pulling and breaking. You know when your edges are braided too tight and you get them like little white specks after a couple of days, that mean your edges are too tight and they need to be loosened a bit. But you can see everything is caught up in the braid, but it's, my hair is not pulled too tight. And when I'm braiding my edges, I kind of take my time and make sure I gently pull out the tangles because you can yank a little too hard. And that might be the end, y'all. At least for that spot. And I don't want no bald spots. I'm touching up my edges. I'm heading upstate this weekend. And I don't want to go up there looking raggedy. So I'm trying to pull myself together so your sister look cute. But yeah, I'm just braiding <coughs> and detangling. As I go along, and I'm going to braid this braid back down all the way to the end. And usually I don't have to re dip my braids because it's just the edges. 
so it should be fine. I shouldn't have to redip them. It should stay good. And usually when it gets uneven like that, I'll split a piece to kind of even it out. And that also keeps the bread from unraveling just so I can get all the way to the ends because I like my hair braided all the way down. And this braid is done. And you can see the difference between that braid. This is the braid on the other side. Ooh, little peas popping out. But you can see the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and take out this next braid and then redo that one. Okay, so I'm just about finished taking out the next braid. And I'm going to gently unravel it. And you can see that build up. Look at that. That's from using the braid spray and gelling my edges down. But I'm going to do the same thing with this braid. I'm going to use the comb side of my edge tamer brush. And I'm just going to comb all of that gunk out. And I'm going to take my brush and brush my hair into place and I'm going to take that edge gel and I'm going to gel my edges good and get the ends as well so that I can get ready to braid. So now I'm ready to put the next braid back in and I kind of just split my hair into two and put the braid in. So I want to make sure I catch all my edges, but I don't want it too tight. And you can see all my edges are caught up, but my hair is not braided too tight because I want to reiterate that I don't want to be bald when I take out my braids. Like I want my edges to remain intact. So when I get down to the ends of my hair, I kind of curve it in tight so that my ends can stay inside the braids and they won't be frizzy. And I just take my time braiding down to the ends the same way I did with the last braid. And I'm just going to take a second real quick to show you guys the difference between that side and this side. And even the difference between those braids and the braids that I didn't get to yet. And I'm just going to go ahead and braid that down to the end. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the next braid. Once again, I'm using my Baby Trust Edge Comb. and I'm using the tail end to get the tangles out the ends. Like if you have leftover hair from when you originally did your hair, the quickest way to do this would be to just cut the braid, take it out and put in a fresh braid. But I don't have any more hair prepped right now, being that I, I soak my hair and wash it and let it dry before I put it in my head as I'm sensitive to the chemicals in the hair that they spray on the hair to keep it from molding and kill any bacteria. So I always soak my braid in here first with apple cider vinegar and warm water before I put it in. So like I said, I don't have any more hair prep right now. So my only option is actually to take out each braid and do it over. But this would be so much easier if you just cut the braid, take it out and put a fresh braid in because it eliminates the time that it takes when you have to take out the braid before you put in a fresh braid. Almost done. Trying not to pull too hard. And I have the braid out. And let's check the base of that braid. Let me see. Not too bad. I'm noticing that the base of the braids are clean. The gunk is just in my edges. And you see that gunk right there? I'm going to take the comb side and comb it out. 
and then brush the remainder out. And I'm just trying to make sure that my parts are straight. And I'm going to brush my edges into place and get some of that edge gel and put it around the edges and get the ends so I can braid the ends up in there good. And I'm going to put the braid back in. And this is pretty much going to be my process, guys, to retouch my whole perimeter. Take out the braid, clear my hair of any gunk, and put the braid back in, making sure that I don't braid too tight so that my edges don't break off. And you can see how tight that is. And then when braiding, just get some more of that edge gel for the ends. To try to braid them up in there tight so that they don't poke out the braids. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and braid this down to the ends. So I'm just about finished taking out the next braid. And I'm just unraveling that last part. And you can see the dirt in my edges. I'm just gonna comb the debris out and then brush the rest out. Kind of brush my brush my edges and trying to make sure my part is lined up. And everything looks good. I'm gonna put that edge gel. And I try to be very gentle in my temple areas because this is where my hair is naturally thin. You can see it right there, so I don't even braid that up. I just gel that down. And now I'm going to just braid up the rest. Everything looks good. And just get the brush. And I brush everything that I want to braid in place and just make sure everything else is gelled down. So I'm not snatching my edges. That's what I don't want to do. And I'm going to get my hair ready. And I'm just going to come in. And I'm going to split that in two. And put my braid back in. Try not to braid too tight. Just tight enough for it to look neat. But not tight enough to pull my edges. Yep, that's good. And I'm just gonna go ahead and take my time and braid that braid all the way down to the ends. Let get some tangles out my ends first. So I almost have the next braid completely out. I'm just unraveling the last bit. And you see the gunk right there in my hair. So I'm going to take that comb and just comb all the way through and get the brush to really get in there. And now I'm going to take that edge gel and I'm just making sure my parts are straight and just get the gel in there so that I can get my hair braided in good. And it's important that I get all sides because in here, my temple area, that's where it's a little shorter. I'm gonna move that braid to the side for a minute so I can see where I just need to gel my hair and not braid it. Because remember, that area is a little thin and I don't like to put too much tension on it. And now I'm gonna put this braid back in and I'm gonna sit the hair in the center and split my hair into two and then just go ahead and start braiding 
tight enough to get close and have my hair neat, but not too tight where it's pulling my edges. That's good. And I'm just going to add some more of that edge gel to my ends so that I can braid them in there nice and tight. And they won't be poking out of the braids. And now let's see how these edges are coming along as a whole. Let me take my little edge brush and brush in there. And this is the side that I retouched. This is the side that I haven't touched yet. You can see the difference. Okay, y'all. So I'm finished retouching the front. It's a little sore, but I'm going to put it up because I'm going to put all my hair up so that I can get the back of the perimeter. But I just want to show you guys. How retouching the front just refresh my whole look, and I'm just gonna put everything up in the ponytail and then in the bun so that I can get to the back more easily. I'm trying to do it pretty loose because. Them edge braids are fresh. You know how that go. You don't want to be pulling them too tight. Okay, so I have everything in a ponytail. And now, let's get it into a loose bun. Okay. That'll work. So let me show y'all what the back of my head is looking like. I'm showing y'all, and I don't even know what it's looking like right now. But this is the back, and I'm going to retouch these braids because as you can see, they're so loose. They look like they're about to fall out. So I'm going to do all of these, and I'm going to do the perimeter until I meet the front. And if I have to, absolutely have to, I'm going to do another row because I'm timing it. But definitely this row. So I took out the first braid and I'm just going to comb it just like I did with the front and use that brush to brush it. I can't see anything, but I never look when I'm doing the back of my hair. I used to, but now I'm too lazy and want to sit down on the couch and chill and watch TV, so I don't. So I'm just feeling my way around and the parts might be a little crooked, but Oh well. <laughs> and I'm putting that edge gel around the perimeter. And now I'm going to put this braid back in. I just split it in two, just like I do the rest. And then braid tightly. I usually find that it's hard for me to braid the back too tight. If anything, it be slipping. But over the past three weeks, while I've had these braids, I've noticed that my hair has grown a lot already because it is so much easier for me to braid this bottom portion than it was when I put my braids in. And I'm just going to take some more edge gel and put it on the ends. And like I said, I can't see, but I'm just feeling my way around. And Everything feels good. Hopefully everything looks good, y'all. And I'm just going to go ahead and braid that all the way to the end. And I'm just about done taking out the next braid. I'm going to go up the side first before I finish the bottom. Just gonna unravel that last section, check the hair, and the hair is fine. And I'm gonna take that little comb side of the brush and comb out 
any gunk and make sure I catch my little peas, bead beads, and I'm going to brush that good. And then I'm going to put gel around the whole perimeter and try to make sure that I catch everything. I feel like I forgot that section. feels good and I'm just going to go ahead and put the next braid back in. And I'm just going to put some more of that gel on my hair to make sure I'm getting the ends inside the braid and they're not poking out all over the place. It feels good enough to me. So I just finished taking out the next braid and I'm going to comb out that gunk. Brush it. And same thing. Put some of your edge gel around the perimeter. I'm feeling my way around, trying to make sure I don't leave out none of them beady beads. And I'm feeling for the part because that part doesn't feel very straight. That feels like it'll do the trick. <laughs> Hope so. And I'm going to put that braid back in. And as y'all can see, I really be winging it when it comes to the back of my hair. I just grab and braid. Usually all turns out well. Sometimes things are a little crooked, but I don't care if my boxes are not perfect. This is the first time in a long time that I actually did box braids that that has actual boxes because usually I just grab and braid. Not saying that there there would be no parts, but my parts usually don't have a perfect box shape. That's what I'm trying to say. That usually doesn't matter to me. So I finish the side, y'all. And those braids are nice and fresh. So I'm going to tuck those into the bun. And then I'm going to continue doing the back so that I can go to the other side and I'm going to be doing this braid next. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. So I'm just about to finish taking that braid out and as you can see it was hanging by a thread almost about to fall out on its own. And I'm going to take that little comb side and comb out any gunk. Take the brush and brush through it. And I'm just feeling for the parts. I'm going to go ahead and put the edge gel around the perimeter and on the ends. And the back of my hair is a completely different texture from the front of my hair. It's actually very silky and straight. So it's a little harder to braid as it can slip. But now that it's longer, like I barely had any hair in the back when I first braided my hair, it makes things a little bit easier. But it's definitely a silkier, more slippery texture than the front of my hair is. The front of my hair is super easy to braid because 
it's coarse and thick and I can just grab onto it easily. But that is a whole nother story. Now I'm gonna finish putting that braid in. So I just finished taking out the next braid and I'm gonna comb the gunk out just like I did the rest. And then I'm going to brush it. And I'm gonna fill around for the part and put that edge gel around the perimeter. And now I am going to braid. And I'm just going to braid that all the way down to the end. And just got to get out any tangles first. So make my job easier. And I'm just going to braid that all the way down to the end. And just to redo the perimeter takes me a couple of hours because the braids are so long and I'm sitting here. Maybe an hour or two. I'm taking loose each braid and then putting them back in. So like I said, if you cut the braids out and put fresh hair, you can do it in way less time. But if you do it like me, you're probably going to do it in double time. And let me just show y'all what I did so far. So I'm going to go ahead and finish doing the perimeter. So I'm on the final braid, y'all. I decided to do two rows in the back because the second row was looking a little rough as well. And I just combed out the gunk. I'm going to take that brush and run it through too. That brush is completely full of gunk, y'all. I'm going to put my edge gel around the perimeter and get my ends. Yeah, I'm going to get that final braid back in here because I ain't doing no more. My sister's tired. So I just split that in half. I'm going to get that braid in there as tight as possible because like I said, the back of my hair is on the silky straighter side. So it's a little harder to grip than the front and it's also short. So sometimes it's hard to get a tighter grip, but I got it, y'all. That is far enough for me. And let me show y'all what the complete perimeter we do looks like. Oh, I forgot one apparently. But that's my perimeter retouch. And now I'm going to show y'all how I put my braids to bed so I can go to bed. So I'm going to take my hair down out of the big bun so I can moisturize it. Take the scrunchie out. And I'm going to be using this IC Fantasia braid sheen spray. And first I'm going to spray around my perimeter. We are just rebraided it to make sure that I get that area because I don't even know if I have enough to finish my whole head, y'all. I'm gonna get in the back and I'm gonna spray all throughout my scalp. Get it all in there real good. Cause I haven't done it in a couple of days. I usually do it like every other day, sometimes every day if I need it, but I knew I was going to be doing, redoing my perimeter. So I hadn't done it in a couple of days. Let's see, I'm running out. 
let me position it in a way. Yeah, so I could get every little drop, y'all. Especially the middle where it's itchy. Because it's too dry. Get the front. And I'm just going to get them edges some more. They need it. And I'm just going to rub that into my scalp a little bit. And I'm going to put on my bonnet. I have this big old jumbo bonnet. It's a bonnet from the Keisha Cole, I believe, Red Kiss collection. I'll link it for you guys in case you want it. Because these braids do not fit in my regular bonnet. My own hair barely fits in my regular bonnet. Don't y'all mind my underarms. I need to shave, but it's whatever. <laughs> but I kind of wrap my hair in a semi bun so that I can get the bonnet on. And then I put the bonnet on and pull it all the way down. And I shake the bun out. And then I pull the bonnet back and Pull it behind my ears so it won't irritate my helix piercing because that's still healing. It's been almost a year, about 10 months, but that's still not completely healed. Sometimes it irritates me and I don't like to leave the bonnet sitting on my forehead too much because my forehead will break out. So I just make sure it's lined up on my edges so my edges are covered good. And there's plenty of room for the braids. And now I'm ready to go to bed. So I hope you guys enjoyed my little braid retouch tutorial. And let me know if you guys have any questions. And I'll see y'all next time. Good night.